Welcome everyone to Fluid Sim series of Tichita. This is lab 4, but actually video number 5 in which we are going to discuss the speed control and we are going to have a special focus on throttle valve and throttle check valve. So first we discuss what is the difference between throttle valve and throttle check valve and then we will look at two different circuits in which we are going to use throttle valve and also throttle check valve. So what is throttle valve? With the use of throttle valve in a pneumatic circuit, we basically uh, would have the capability of changing the speed of actuator as we can change the opening level of throttle valve. So as we reduce the opening level, the amount of flow can pass through that valve is going to be less. Therefore, the speed of actuation is going to be reduced. And we would have the same concept for the, for the throttle check valve, but the difference is when we are using throttle valve, the speed for both actuation and retraction is going to be the same. But when you, we are using throttle check valve, based on the mechanism in there, the speed of retraction and basically advancing are going to be different. So, Depending on the application, sometimes we use throttle valve in which we don't need to have different speed for advancing and retraction, but we use basically throttle check valve when we are expecting having different speed in advancing and retraction of a form of actuation and let's say single acting cylinder or double acting cylinder. Having this concept in mind, we want to design two different circuits in this specific lab and we want to look at how the opening level of uh, throttle valve can affect the speed of a single acting cylinder and then we will look at throttle check valve and we'll see how with basically the use of throttle check valve we can have different speed for advancing and retraction of piston inside a double acting cylinder. Let's look at the first circuit. So the first circuit that we have, as you can see, similar to any other circuits that we design, we have air supply, right? Uh, we have air service unit. Let me bring this pointer. We have air supply, air service unit, the manifold, which is distributing the, the air between the signaling elements and the control element there, right? and we have directional control valves, two of them are signaling there, right? And one of them is controlling this, basically, throttle valve, and from there we are controlling this single acting cylinder. If you look in here, we have two directional control valves, which are manually actuated, right? So we can manually actuate them, and once they're actu actuated manually, they are going to send a signal to this specific directional control valve there, right? And that basically they pass the air from this line, right? When this is actuated manually, air will pass through this arrow, right? And then we will have air passing to this pneumatic actuation. And from there, this directional control valve is going to be pneumatically actuated, right? And but after that, the air will pass through this arrow and therefore the air gets to this throttle valve and depending on the opening level that we have for this throttle valve this uh, single acting cylinder will be actuated and with the use of this throttle valve and the opening level that we have for this throttle valve we can control the speed of uh, this uh, single acting cylinder and once this is fully actuated the next step is basically the retraction mechanism right so we manually actuate this one this is going to be manually act uh, pneumatically actuated and this will return back to its normal position the air will pass through this throttle valve to exhaust and from there the system will return back to its fully normal position or fully retracted position so we'll see how this throttle valve works inside fluid seam and how we can basically change the behavior of a single acting cylinder or let's say the speed of a single acting cylinder with the use of a throttle valve. 
The second circuit that we have is looking at the application of throttle uh, check valve. So instead of having throttle valve, in here we have two throttle check valves, as you can see. So the symbol is different, and based on the symbol, we can have a good understanding of how this basically component works inside a pneumatic circuit. So let's say we have the air in here, right? And this, this one is actuated air passed through this line and we reach to this a specific position, right? Now, air basically has two branches to pass through, right? But first it will find the free pass. So the air will pass through this way, reaches to this point, right? So it, the pass is sealed open. So the air will pass through this way, get to this line, and from there the air will pass inside uh, this uh, cylinder and this piston inside that will move towards fully advanced position so it will reach to this fully advanced position now let's look at the reverse motion when the system is basically moving towards retraction so the air will pass through this line gets to this specific point right and then again it has two branches that the air can pass through that uh, those two branches right so it gets to this line right and look at this ball right so it pushes this ball there but the air cannot find any pass to move from this line right so it should return back basically and then it looks at this throttle depending on how much opening that we have over there the air will pass so what we have in here is initially because the air is passing through a free path right the air is basically getting to this double acting cylinder very fast and the advancing uh, process is going to be very fast but if we get to the retraction process because the air cannot pass through this line because that ball is blocking the pass right the air should pass through this throttle valve and when it reaches to that throttle valve, depending on how much opening that we have over there, the speed is going to be different. That's how we can control the speed of this uh, piston inside a double acting cylinder. So having this introduction about the throttle check valve and throttle valve, in the next part of this video, we will focus on basically looking at the behavior of this circuit inside fluid seam and we will see how basically uh, these throttle check valves and throttle valves can affect the behavior of actuation within a pneumatic circuit. Now we have designed the first circuit. I already designed it, right? And we want to see how throttle valve can affect the behavior of single acting cylinder when it is actuated right and it is moving towards fully advanced position or when it is in retraction process so it is almost the same as what we saw in the second video in which we were discussing the basically different single acting cylinder and uh, double acting cylinder and differences between these two form of actuators so what we have in here we basically have three different form of directional control valves in terms of actuation as you see two of them identical and they should be manually actuated in order to get basically this one either actuated for advancing or actuating for uh, retraction of the single acting cylinder right but the important component there is this throttle valve because with the use of this throttle valve and changing the opening level of this throttle valve, we can change the speed of the piston inside this uh, single acting cylinder. So if we change the opening level in there between 0 to 100, 
we can change the speed of this motion in terms of advancing or retraction. So let's play with this opening level, see how it is affecting the behavior of this system in general and how we can basically use throttle valve within a pneumatic circuit to get different speed for a certain form of actuation. Okay, so I'm going to start it. This simulation is started as expected because all of these directional control valves are normally closed the air cannot pass because this is normally closed right the air is blocked in this way right this port is blocked this port is blocked and the same thing is happening so the system cannot work until we have someone one operator there and he or she should basically manually push this one this manual operate this is manually operated right so we have to push it and then the air we pass through this line gets to this, to this basically pneumatic actuation and from there we have this directional control valve pneumatically actuated and from there the air pass through the throttle valve and we already set 100 opening 100 percent opening level level which means the air can completely pass and we have the highest possible flow rate there right so the air pass and from there we have a very fast advancing right process for this piston inside this single acting cylinder so the actuation is going to be very fast now we can look at the retraction mechanism retraction process if i manually actuate this one what we will see is the air can pass through this arrow right and from this line and from there we have this pneumatic actuation for this directional control valve and the directional control valve 1v1 we return back to its normally closed position and the air because this spring force in that case will overcome the pressure of the air over there right so the air will pass through this line to the exhaust right so what we have in that case is the system will return back to its uh, basically uh, normally uh, closed condition right and from there the air can pass to the exhaust right so the system will return back to its fully retracted position so that is what I will do in here so you see everything is very quick because the opening level of this throttle is still 100% now what I'm going to do is changing this opening level to 5 right and then we have opening level of 5 if we basically manually actuate 1 is 1 see it takes a bit for the air to completely go inside this basically uh, single acting cylinder now if we go for basically retraction again we need to manually actuate this time one is two and you see it takes a bit for this piston to get back to its fully retracted position or let's say to its initial position so that is how throttle valve help us to basically control the speed of single acting cylinder or let's say any form of actuators that we have and any form of actuators that can be connected to a throttle valve so in industry sometimes we need to have basically a very fast motion in that way we can have a throttle valve let's say with 100 percent sometimes it is needed to a bit reduce the speed there right what we can do is just putting a throttle valve there right and from there we can get uh, basically the control over the speed up the actuation mechanism okay so this is the first circuit that uh, basically show us how throttle valve can help us in controlling the speed of uh, an actuator so the second circuit will be focused on uh, basically throttle check valve and we'll see how throttle check valve can basically change the speed and how we can have different speed in basically advancing and retraction process with the use of a throttle check valve. In the previous part of the video, we saw how uh, actually throttle valves is helping us in order to basically control the speed of actuators, right? But we didn't have any sort of flexibility when we are in the advancing process or in retraction process the speed is going to be the same but when we are going to use 
a throttle check valves with a system, with a pneumatic system, we would have the flexibility in order to control the speed when we are actually in advancing process or in retraction process. So if we look in here, we have two throttle check valves and if we compare it with the previous circuit, uh, there are two big differences in here. The first one is this directional control valve. The other one was three ports, two position. This one is basically five ports, two position. So this is the first difference. And the other difference is the use of throttle check valves in here. For the previous case, we had one throttle valve which was connected to a single acting cylinder. But here we have two throttle check valves which is connected to the first port and the throttle check valve, the second one connected to the exhaust port as you can see here. So what we have in here, these two throttle check valves can help us basically to control the speed of the piston inside this double acting cylinder, right? in advancing and retraction process and how it works as i already explained when we have the air let's say we have the air in here right it gets to this point now if we look at this throttle and also this side so because this side is a free path the air can pass and gets inside and then it will go inside there right and the system is going to basically move towards the fully advanced position now because the air should pass through this line gets in here right it will check both sides right because this side is closed it should pass through this throttle and again it depends on the opening level that we have for this throttle if the opening level is 100 percent so we have the the system the throttle fully open the air can pass very fast but if we already changed it it means the advancing position is going to be slower, right? So with the help of this throttle check valve in this port, connected to this port, we can basically control the speed of this piston inside this uh, double acting cylinder, or let's say the speed of actuation, right? And for the retraction, if we look, the same thing is happening, right? Because if the air wants to pass through this line, gets to this point, this pass is closed because if the air comes here, this ball will close the path. And the other thing is this side, we have a throttle. And if the opening level already changed, already reduced, we cannot have a very fast retraction. Okay, let's start the simulation, see how this can actually uh, be presented inside the fluid sim. Okay, you see we have the everything, the air, everything in there is ready because we have three different directional control valves. They are all normally closed, so we cannot have any actuation until we have the manual actuation here, right? Once I do this manual actuation, you see we have a very fast advancing, right? So it gets to fully advanced position quickly because this throttle valve, if you double click on it, you see it is completely open right and then if I basically manually actuate this side you see we will have a very fast retraction too because opening level in this side is also 100% so we have the throttle fully open now let's basically play with this opening level to see what will happen in this circuit in terms of the speed of actuation so if I go and change this one to 5, right, and now if I basically manually actuate in here, you see it is taking a bit for the system, for the piston to get to, get to that fully advanced position, right? But this is not the same for retraction because we already have this throttle fully open. So the speed should be the same as what we saw for the very uh, first case right so let's uh, manually actuate this you see the air is passing through this line quickly because that throttle is already completely open right now if I change the opening level in here to 5 let's say we will observe the same uh, basically uh, situation for this one and the speed is going to be less too so 
if uh, what we did for the first case manual actuation from this side right the speed was fast now if I manually actuate this one we have a slow as expected uh, advancing and if I manually actuate this we expect to have again a slower basically uh, retraction or the same speed as we observed for the advancing because the opening level in this side is the same as opening level in this side so manually actuate this one you see the retraction is going to be basically uh, again slower comparing to the case of fully open throttle so what we did in here we controlled the speed of uh, piston or the speed of this uh, double acting cylinder with the use of two throttle check valves and we could control the speed in the in the process of advancing of the piston and in the process of retraction of the piston so that is the big difference that we have between the throttle valve and throttle check valves okay thank you very much for watching this video hope you learned how throttle valve and throttle check valves can help us in controlling the speed of single acting cylinder and double acting cylinder or let's say in general the speed of actuation and if you enjoyed please subscribe our channel